Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, I'm going to walk through my top three dividend stocks from the information technology sector that could help diversify our investments and give us the passive income that could help each of us get closer to our goal of financial independence. Now, when I was picking these stocks, I focused on a few different things. First, obviously, we want good dividends. Ideally, dividends that have steadily increased over the past few years and also look like they're going to continue to increase. Then I tried to look for companies that could afford to pay their current dividends and their anticipated dividends. So I was searching for companies that had good dividend coverage. Then finally, I tried to focus on companies that seem to have solid business plans going out at least the next couple of years. Now, this video is part of a new passive income from dividend series where we're trying to put together the top three dividend stocks from each of the 11 global investment classification standards, or they call that GICs for short. They're basically ways to group companies. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on first information technology, and then we're going to jump over to all of the other companies going right down the line. So if you know any companies that you think are great dividend stocks from this sector, please put them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. It really helps the video, it really helps the channel. So if you could jump down there and do that. Okay, now let's get started. So the first dividend paying stock from the IT sector is actually a company I've talked about in the past, and that's Corning, ticker symbol GLW. So Corning has a dividend yield of slightly more than two and a half percent. And when we look at revenue, we can see revenue going back to about 2012. It's had some decent growth. And with that decent revenue growth, we can see that earnings per share has also grown at a decent pace. Earnings per share is another way to say profit per share. So you take the earnings per share, you compare that to the dividend per share, and that gives us the dividend coverage ratio I mentioned a second ago. We want the profits to be greater than the dividends. Okay, so what is it that Corning does that we like from a business perspective? Well, there's a few things that they do that I think looks promising for the next couple of years. First, they produce fiber optic cable, and this is going to be key for the next generation of cell phone technology, which is 5G. They also make a Gorilla Glass, which you may have heard of. They, uh, they're popular on a lot of smartphones today. They also make LCD screens, which is used in uh, computer monitors, televisions, things like that. They also do, uh, they make some kitchenware and they do lab products. So clearly many of their products uh, seem like they have some staying power. And when we jump over to their dividends per share, well here, dividends per share over the past few years have grown fairly nicely. So overall, I think that Corning is a fairly solid business that is likely to keep growing, at least in the near future over the next couple of years. And I would expect, expect for them to continuously increase their dividends. The green bars are analyst estimates, and it seems that analysts are also expecting dividend increases. And I think that this could go a long way to helping diversify our portfolio and provide us with some of the passive income that dividends offer many investors. Okay, the next company on our IT dividend stock list is Cisco, ticker symbol CSCO. Now, Cisco's best known for their networking products. They sell products like routers or switchers or servers, things along those lines. They also some sell some software. Now, when we look at Cisco's revenue, we could see that revenue has done fairly decent. They've been growing pretty good. They had a pretty good 2019. That just ended for them back in July. And we can see that, according to the green bars, analysts are expecting revenues to continue to climb over the next couple of years. When we switch over to earnings per share or profits per share, well, there we can see a very similar story. In 2019, they had decent growth. And it seems like, according to analyst estimates, it looks like it will continue to grow, keep growing. Then, when we switch over to the good stuff, dividend per share, well, here we can see that dividends have been climbing fairly nicely and fairly consistently on an annual basis. Right now, they have a dividend yield of slightly less than 3%. I think it's like 2.9%, give or take, as of the time of this recording. And based on the current trajectory of the business in general and the internet and how many products each individual is using, I would expect for their business to remain fairly popular over the next couple of years. So I think that's a good addition. Okay, next up, we have the Saber Corporation. Ticker symbol S-A-B-R. Now, Sabre is a bit smaller than the other two companies I just mentioned. They're worth about $6 billion on the stock market. They call that the market cap. 
If we compare that to a company like Cisco, well, they're worth about $200 billion, and a company like Corning, well, they're worth about $23 billion. So what does Sabre do? Well, they're the technology behind many of the hotels and car rental and airline websites that I'm sure many of us have either used or seen advertisements for. Basically, if, have you ever wondered how all of these companies, I know I have, have wondered how all these companies have access to so many different hotel rooms or things like that? Often, Sabre or a company like them is the group behind them. They're the group providing the technology. Now, as you can imagine, booking vacations and things like that online are likely to continue to grow at at least a reasonable pace, which partially helps explain their decent revenue growth. And then when we switch over to earnings per share, well, although it's a bit more volatile and there's a dip in 2019 compared to 2018, well, I would expect for the online booking business to continue to grow. And overall, I would expect for their dividend at the end of the day to keep pushing things forward as more and more things move online. Now, I don't know if it's necessarily the case that this sector will grow as perhaps some other grow as quickly as some other sectors in the technology field. But I do think that their about two and a half percent dividend yield is fairly safe when we compare it to the, I, I would expect for them to be a fairly steady company. That's one of the reasons I like them for this top three list is that I would expect for them to grow fairly steadily. So in my mind, this, can, this company could be a solid contributor to a portfolio of dividend paying stocks that, that can ultimately help provide the passive income that we need from our dividend stocks to achieve the financial independence that many of us are after. And then up next in this series, we're gonna do the top three dividend stocks from the material sector, and then we're gonna go right down the line through each of the sectors until ultimately we have about 33 companies that could be great additions for passive income to our dividend portfolio. Now, if you're not too comfortable with dividends in general, or how dividends work, well, this video right here, it's called The Truth About Dividends, well, this video is probably the next best one to watch because that video will really walk you through the nuances of how a dividend stock and a dividend portfolio will work. So if you haven't done so yet, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to get notifications. Thanks so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.